I am Anthony from Hashers, and you're watching 10 Questions. Today I'm here with Sam of TF Collector. I will ask 10 questions about his experience as a YouTuber, as well as what led him onto that path. Hi, Sam. Hey, how's it going? Don't know, have no answer, we'll never have an answer. Okay. <laughs> I have 10 questions to ask you that I more or less ask everyone, but it just is specifically for you. If you at any time leave an opening, I may ask a follow-up question. Are you ready to begin? Absolutely. Okay. So the first question is, what entertained you while growing up? Uh, well, obviously the Transformers brand. Uh, I was also pretty big into things like the Ninja Turtles. Uh, Spawn was a big one as I got a little bit older. I always thought that was really cool. Uh, Power Rangers there when I was young. And uh, I actually got into the uh, the Lego Bionicle toys there for a bit. Collected those for some time till they kind of died out. Uh, so what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? So it was two main things. Uh, one, I just didn't really have anyone to talk to about Transformers. Uh, at the time, I was in the military, and there's not like an overwhelming number of people in the military that are into things like that. Uh, and then my wife, though, she you know tries to be supportive, and she's like, you know, oh, that's nice, honey. Uh, she doesn't really care for it at all. So it was... You know, just to have people to talk to about it and just to find a way to kind of, I guess, step outside of a comfort zone, do something new. And, you know, if I got lucky and it was successful, I could maybe turn that into, you know, some sort of job or something. Okay. So, so uh, when did your YouTube channel premiere? Uh, it was about three years ago or three, three and a half years ago now. Okay, so then the first what, one ever. right? Oh, sorry, so <laughs> that's fine. Uh, what did you initially offer when you started? So the my initial offering was pretty much what I do ninety percent of the time was the toy reviews on Transformers. Um, and that's made up the vast majority of my content. I had hopes of branching out a little bit more than that, and sometimes I do. I'll do discussion videos, things like that. Uh, but I, you know put on their like games, like gaming, uh, playthroughs, things like that. And I haven't gotten around to it in, you know, over three years now, mostly due to having kids and, you know, work schedule and all that. But yeah, vast majority of it is and always has been toy reviews for Transformers. Okay, so speaking of that, in your background, you actually have shelves of yes. toys. Uh, oh, is it more than what I'm just seeing on camera, or do you have? Is, are you? Oh yeah, it, it wraps all the way around the room. So you have, everywhere. so you have a collection room. Oh yes. Uh, can you uh, can you tell us kind of like what what's where? I, I feel like I, I I'm, I'm trying to catch what's in the. It looks like you have Studio Series in the back there, yeah. or is so that just the, the shelf right behind me? Uh, up top, it's just all that new stuff. The Studio Series 86, Kingdom, uh, the new Retro Headmasters. Uh, down below that is actually just kind of everything I've yet to review. <laughs> like my, my backlog of things that seems to grow more than it ever shrinks. Uh, I've been busy. Uh, every four weeks, I get a week off of work, and that's when I'm usually most active, and I can pump out as much as possible. So that's mostly just junk. And then, oh boy, it's it's hard because I'm going on a laptop and I can't really rotate it around. But I've just got things broken down by different sections. Masterpiece up there, uh, like Generations to Thrilling 30, Main Studio Series, Combiner Wars, Titans Return, Power of the Primes, Siege. Basically, every toy line in Transformers, but like Power Core Combiners because I had taken a break from collecting when that happened. So I don't have any of those. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. I live up to the, the channel name. <laughs> okay, so what trends have you seen change with online content creation since you started your channel? Uh, well, it's it's gotten a lot safer. And when I, you know, when I say safer, I guess uh, more precautionary uh, with things that have happened over the years. There was the whole issue with um, making sure your videos weren't geared toward children because that would affect, you know, your channel and stuff. Kappa. Uh, What's that? Kappa. Yeah, the Kappa thing, yeah. Um, and YouTube's really been very skittish about just making sure you don't say certain terms in your reviews that even if they're not uh, intended to 
be controversial. They could be like, I'm afraid to call, you know, somebody's laser gun a gun because I'm afraid I'm going to get flagged by YouTube for saying that word. Uh, so it's definitely you're kind of tiptoeing on glass a little bit more. And with the whole adpocalypse thing that happened, you definitely see, uh, you know, a lot more coming to that. And when it comes to the revenue side of things, which I don't get a lot, but I, I do run ads, uh, you can tell that your revenue just has gone down in maybe the last year or two because people are just more skittish about advertising on YouTube now. Yeah. So it's the biggest thing I've seen. So uh, what brings people to your YouTube channel right now? Like, uh, have you done like features or something specifically that you've seen like an uptick in doing specifically outside of the norm? Uh, well, I will say lately going by feedback in the comments section, I do get a lot of, I guess, praise from viewers. Uh, they like that I go very in depth on things, uh, perhaps too much sometimes, uh, which my videos can drag on more than they probably should. Uh, but I just, I like to be very honest, very opinionated when I do the reviews. It's not just a quick, like, you know, here's a truck, here's a robot. Okay. Bye. Like I, I really get into what I feel about it. Sometimes I think maybe I should save that for separate videos, but for the most part, people seem to like that. Uh, so I think they like the fact that I mix commentary with just a review of the video or the figure itself. And that seems to be what draw people into it. Uh, Cause I watch a lot of reviewer videos. So I think this is the right one. I, I believe you did a review of Triptychon, right? Or was it Scorponok? One of the two, I, I want to say it was Triptychon. It was so big that, uh, uh, that you you constantly had to go around it to transform it on top of a yeah. table, so yeah. uh, it was like um, you you went seriously in depth, and uh, I'm like, wow. Well, first off, I don't have the attention span, so when I do reviews, it's typically <laughs> 15 minutes and two transformers. I'm and once I'm done, I'm done. You really were like, okay, and then you can fit like 20 MicroMasters on the you know periphery of the figure, and then you transform it into all the ba modes. And, and you explain how everything fits in. You are super detailed, which I guess, um, as you said, uh, other people really appreciate that. Uh, it, it's rare because a lot of people talk about, oh, it has ratchets here, ratchets here, it transforms, it bends here. They'll transform it, say, oh, well, this is why I like it. And then that's the video. Yeah. But you really go into depth. Oh, yeah. Not everyone appreciates the approach. I do get the comments where it's like, Oh my God, five minutes into the video, you finally open the box, man. Like, if you don't like it, there's other reviewers. I'm sorry if that's not your style, but I, I feel it's important to, you know, be true to your own style and just do what makes you happy, right? Because if you're not enjoying it, why are you even doing this in the first place? Yeah, I was one of the I'm other, sure. yeah, one of the other reviewers was like, um, this should be a hobby first and foremost. Uh, if you make money from it, that's great. But if you think right. of this as a job, you're going to be doing this for years making nothing, and you're going to feel bad about it. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Transformers. Transformers. So what changes, if any, do you have planned for your YouTube channel in the near future? Like, uh, are you planning to do some features? Are you changing things up? Are you, are you introducing a new series? So I definitely want to push more into this uh, discussion side of things, uh, kind of along the lines of uh, maybe what Rodimus Primal does. You know, he does a lot of those long form discussions, which I've done a few. Some I'm proud of, some I think could definitely be revisited because, you know, bad mic quality at the time or whatever. Uh, I, I definitely want to do more stuff like that because I enjoy that a lot. It's just very time consuming, which, you know, when your time's limited, it's, it's tough to get those out. Reviews take a lot less time. Um, so that's something I want to push more towards to kind of get closer to a 50, 50 split between that and the reviews. I also, uh, recently unlocked the, uh, the membership feature on the channel. I don't know what determines that it just kind of popped up one day. And I'm, before I implement something like that, I want to really brainstorm and make that worth everyone's while. So I, I have some ideas as far as how you can make this work and it's not just some kind of cash grab, but like some way actually benefit people. I'm thinking, um, you know, different levels. We'll have like a monthly draw basically of the people in that tier and reward them with a, a free, you know, transformer, transformer related item proportional to whatever tier they're doing. And that way it's kind of like a potluck. Uh, just 
things that I'm not 100% sure on, but I definitely want to find a way to utilize that whole membership thing to its fullest and really help make the channel more interactive and, and make people kind of excited to, you know, hop on YouTube and see what's going on. Yeah, so that's I, what I got in the short term. Right. I, I think the requirement might be a number of specific views because you get you get to the 1000 subscribers and then you need a certain number of views to become monetized. Right. I think they've tiered it up where you, each level unlocks a new feature. Yeah, there was um, I forget what the official word was. It was like X number of views or subs unless you're a gaming channel and then it was lower. I'm like somewhere between those two numbers. I think it was like a thousand for a gaming channel and then way more than I have for not. And at some point they're just like, okay, you can have it too. And they just like, I just saw it on my options one day. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, so I'm not really sure. Uh, I'll tell you, as far as the monetization thing, um, that before it was a thousand subs, it used to be way, it was uh, not even subscriber based. It was just like number of views or something. And I had gotten like this close to that mark and then they went and changed it. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, can't believe you guys. And then it took me forever to reach a thousand. Like it, oh, what was it? Like the first two, two and a half years before I hit that mark. Definitely not a fast grower. I'm steady, but not fast. Been a very slow ride. Okay. So uh, what changes would you like to make if you had unlimited resources? Like what's preventing you from going that next level? What is, what would you love to do? <sighs> I, I would very much love to actually have a, a separate studio to record in. Um, I love my family to death, but my kids can make this very difficult sometimes. And you, you'll see in some videos that sometimes I just have to have them in here with me because they won't leave me alone. <laughs> uh, so it is hard to get that quiet time to actually really put production value into it. Um, talking on limited resources, obviously free time is a big thing because I don't have much of that. And I would love, absolutely love to be able to hire somebody to do editing because that is by far the most time consuming part of doing these reviews. You know, I'll spend 30 minutes recording and then an hour editing that, then, you know, dealing with processing, uploading, all that. I would love a private editor, just somebody I could just record, send it to them and, you know, in good faith that they're going to patch it up like they need to. And then I could just keep churning things out and put out a lot more like I actually want to. So I never feel like I'm making enough videos. I always feel behind. So probably two biggest things, like a studio and an editor would be amazing, but I'm nowhere close to being able to afford either of those things, so. Okay. So um, do you wish to mention anything else about your YouTube channel? Mention anything else about it? Uh, well, I just, I really very much enjoy the comment section of it. It's kind of what gives me life and what keeps motivating me to keep doing the YouTube because I do get demotivated sometimes it's a very large time investment and when you're not seeing a lot of success like you put out a video you're super proud of and it gets like a hundred views and then dies that's really deflating and I really really count on the the people that you know tend to show up and you know we have a lot of regulars that'll just come on there and they'll we'll just talk we'll talk about the toys or what they thought of the review constructive criticism and that makes me really really happy I really like seeing that. So, yeah, I just, I want to keep finding ways to increase that engagement. Uh, I know there's some people that have like their own Discord channel. Maybe try something like that and that'll, that way even outside of YouTube, we can just stay engaged and maybe I'll roll that into the membership thing. I don't know yet. I'm all over the place. Do you have content on other outlets and how can people find more about your content online? Now, I do have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Facebook is facebook.com slash tfmrcollector. Uh, and then Instagram is instagram.com slash tf underscore collector underscore net. And then Twitter is twitter.com slash tfmr underscore collector. And then YouTube is, of course, your channel, which is just uh, youtube.com TF Collector. Now, I do have to ask, what's the, were you Mr. Collector at some point? Mr. Cl no. Uh, so some I, I try to just keep it TF Collector, but a lot of places that's taken for whatever reason. So then I just kind of went like the next abbreviation up was like TFMR, like Transformer. Ah, okay. Yeah. So whenever I can't do TF because they won't let me, I'll, I'll just extend it just as much as I need to to get them to let me do it. Okay. Keep it simple. So um, is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap this up? Uh, well, um, I guess as far as places to find me, 
in addition to those listed. I'm also on um, three of the big fan sites, uh, Sabertron.com, Tformers.com, and TFW2005 as Lorekeeper. So if anyone's active on the boards uh, and you see Lorekeeper speaking up, that is me. Uh, so love to talk to you guys on there. And I don't know, I just I thank everybody that watches these videos, that supports the TF Reviewer community that we have right now. And uh, I love the reviewers themselves, too. I've met a lot of them, and they're all really great guys. All guys so far. Do we have any any women in there yet? We need, Other we need, than like, female Danny, viewers. Oh, no, just, just yeah. one. Convince the girls to, to play along with us. Well, we... Uh, I want to say it's not like we're purposely excluding them. It's just the interest. Oh, of course there. not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. It, it's hard. It's hard to find that interest out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I've met so many people and yeah, I think it, it's a great community to be in. Uh, most people, most people are very reasonable. You get those on the, on the boards that aren't quite that. Um, and I just look, I look forward to kind of growing with the community getting to know more people as we do more kind of collaborations and, and group projects and, you know, hopefully convince some people that are in the audience right now that maybe they should start creating because, you know, there's no limit. And if they like these reviews and they want to do something like it, they should give it a shot and, you know, start their own channel and have some fun with it. Okay. Well, thank you for speaking with me today. And for anybody who is watching, uh, feel free to comment. Let us know what you thought. Uh, of course, don't forget to visit TF Collector on YouTube as well as his social media. And I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.